we're going to look at section 5 in our notes here. And what we're going to do is try to figure out what makes a graph an honest graph. So we're going to talk about honest graph. Now the opposite of this is deceiving or misleading graphs. So let's label this honest graphs. And under each part of this, we're going to list a number of things that make graphs honest. So first one we're going to write is start each axis AXIS at zero. Now all of these rules that I'm about to talk about are not the only way to correctly make a graph. However, in general, these are we call them rules of thumb. That means things that most of the time should be followed. There are always going to be exceptions to these rules that we're talking about, um, but you want to make sure you think about each one of these as you analyze a graph. So starting each axis at zero means that if you have some kind of graph that goes up and goes to the right, that you don't start counting at 50 and then 51, 52 on your graph. You would count starting at zero and then work your way up to 50. Same thing the other direction. Start your axes at zero. Next one that follows on along with that is evenly space numbers. on the axis or on the axes. What that means is that when you count, if you are counting here, let's say you're counting by 20s. It means 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and so forth. If you were to say something like 20, 25, 30, 50, 100, 105, there, uh, the, the numbers wouldn't be evenly spaced and so when you go to draw your graph it would be hard to tell how much bigger or smaller each of the bars in the graph is or where the line really is going uh, in the graph um, if you don't evenly space the numbers on both of your axes. Another one is change length, not area. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? To change length and not area, that means that if you have a bar graph, I'll just draw this here. If you have a bar graph and this bar is twice as tall as the first bar that I drew, you'd want your graph to look like this, something like that. Um, a bad version of that would be to say, okay, here's my little graph, and then since my big one is twice as tall, it's also going to be twice as wide that would be deceiving because then it looks like it's actually four times as big not just twice as big um, as it does in the first example so make sure that you don't deceive your audience by making things look bigger than they are another one uh, that comes up is if you have a picture let's say you had a picture of an hourglass and you wanted to fill that in and let's say that you have 20 percent of people at the bottom 20 percent of people at the top and everyone else falls into the middle because of the shape of the picture that area that I shaded in is not actually going to be as large as, um, as it's supposed to be the areas on the two ends that are supposed to be only 20 percent each might end up taking well over half of the total picture um, because they got the really big part of the graph and the part that actually was supposed to be bigger 
got the really small part of the graph. And so sometimes your graphs can be deceiving if they're pictures instead of just traditional bar graphs. Other things to watch out for is be careful with tilted pictures. Be careful with tilted pictures. And an example of that would be something like instead of having a pie chart like this, you would tilt your pie chart so it's kind of like a 3D type of drawing. And you kind of go something like that. And you make the very front slice this one that appears to be huge takes up the entire front visible edge when really you just can't as easily see the other pieces they're still there and they're still pretty big but this piece looks like it's huge because of where they placed it and how they tilted it so that's one more thing to watch out for when you're looking for misleading graphs